We're here today to announce three separate cases highlighting the ongoing threat posed by Chinese economic espionage and research theft in the United States. Over the past decade, it's no secret that China has intensified their efforts to challenge America on the global stage. Whether it's military posturing, economic targeting, or the war for technology, the Chinese have become increasingly bold in their actions against the US. But rather than developing their own technology, the Chinese have devised a far simpler method of innovation, theft. They've made it no secret that they want to steal our secrets. The US government estimates that China steals $136 million worth of intellectual property from America every single day. $136 million a day. That is about $50 billion a year in information that China is carrying off from American companies, businesses, military, political leaders, all of that back to the homeland, the motherland of China. And with the success of their intellectual property theft operation, they've decided to expand into other realms, hoping to steal American military, medical, and technological secrets through an even more insidious method, espionage. When most people hear espionage, they think of spy movies and James Bond, stealing secrets with cunning plans and, if necessary, violence. But when it comes to China, that type of espionage isn't even necessary because there's one group of people within America who they can always count on to do their evil bidding for them. College professors. China has created an organized plot to buy and steal information from America through American professors themselves. It's called the Thousand Talents Program. Through talent recruitment programs, China has strategically and systematically acquired knowledge and intellectual property from researchers and scientists in both the public and private sector. The American taxpayer has, in effect, unwittingly funded research that has contributed to China's global rise over the past 20 years. China then uses that research to bolster their own military and technological goals, and our professors are all too happy to sell out their country in the process. Translation, American professors are selling American secrets to the Chinese Communist Party for their own benefit. Here are just a few of the most blatant examples of the professors who were caught selling secrets to China. On January 28th, 2020, 60 year old Charles Lieber was arrested and convicted after it was discovered that in addition to his role as the chair of Harvard University's chemistry department, pretty big deal, he also had a side gig as a spy for China. Lieber was paid $50,000 a month by the Chinese Communist Party to share research from Harvard, along with helping to build out a medical lab in China at the Wuhan University of Technology. Yes, that Wuhan. Lieber falsified IRS documents and lied under oath multiple times to try and cover up his secret work for the Chinese, but eventually he was charged and convicted on six counts this December. Next is Yi Chi Shi. She was a UCLA professor and respected electrical engineer until it was discovered that he was actually working as a spy, smuggling sensitive military research to the Chinese Communist Party. According to the Justice Department, she worked with an associate to gain access to information regarding high-powered semiconductor chips that are used in guided missiles and fighter jets. You know, totally normal stuff to put onto a hard drive to smuggle into a communist regime. Totally normal professor stuff, right? His plan was to export the information to AVIC-607. What is that exactly? Well, it's a communist party-owned entity in China. Because of that, he's now been sentenced to five years in prison for the scheme. This is Professor James Lewis from West Virginia University. After having a son, Professor Lewis wanted some time off from grading papers and giving lectures, so he took paid paternity leave. You know, he just wanted to be with his son. Except, instead of staying home with a newborn baby, Lewis secretly went to China to share American research and help develop the Chinese Academy of Sciences. He was given half a million dollars in a, quote, research subsidy, along with $250,000 in living stipends, all while still being paid by West Virginia University and all while being on paid paternity leave. He was caught and sentenced to three months in prison for fraud. I think a lot of people would like to see some other charges there too. This man, Song Gao Zhang, was a respected professor at Ohio State University, Penn State, and the University of Southern California. He was so respected that he was given $4.1 million in federal grants to research immunology and rheumatology. But what Zhang never mentioned while receiving those government-funded grants was that he was also secretly employed by the Chinese government all along, and he was sending all of that taxpayer-funded research right back to China. When his employer called on and started digging into what he was doing with his research, Zhang hopped on a chartered flight to Alaska with, according to the DOJ, 
three large bags, one small suitcase, a briefcase containing two laptops, three cell phones, several USB drives, several silver bars, expired Chinese passports, and deeds for property in China. Totally normal stuff to take on a private jet to Anchorage as a US college professor. I'm sure there was nothing nefarious going on, except there was. He was arrested there after deplaning and later sentenced to 37 months in prison for his illegal scheme. This is Chen Song, a former researcher in Stanford's neurology department. When she came to the US, she told authorities she'd been out of the Chinese military for seven years. Yes, yeah, she used to be in, but those days were long behind her. Now, she said that she worked at a hospital in China, but it turns out that hospital was actually a front for a military hospital, and that Song was still an active member of the Chinese People's Liberation Army. When authorities caught on to that fact that she'd been lying about being in the military, Song began destroying documents, which showed her true identity, and she also started destroying evidence of her involvement in smuggling American research out of the country. Her trial is ongoing, but she currently faces 35 years in prison. Next up is Mr. Fang Tao, a professor and researcher at the University of Kansas. In 2018, Mr. Tao secretly joined the Thousand Talents program that we mentioned earlier, and in addition to his assignment to steal American research on behalf of China, he was also tasked with, quote, recruiting two to three doctoral students and three to four master's students per year to join his scheme. During this time, Tao was able to secure multiple contracts with the Department of Energy and the National Science Foundation. The DOJ says he used those contracts to obtain and smuggle information to the Chinese Communist Party. This is Ching Wang, a professor of medicine at Case Western Reserve University and a doctor at the esteemed Cleveland Clinic in Ohio. Mr. Wang and his research team were the beneficiaries of a $3.6 million grant for molecular medicine from the National Institutes of Health. Yeah, that NIH. It turns out he forgot to mention to the NIH that he was also being given millions of dollars worth of grants by the Chinese government for the exact same research project. Authorities say that he was using taxpayer dollars from the US to obtain research and information that he would then pass on to his Chinese counterparts working on the exact same project. Again, nothing to see here, just a coincidence. And it was definitely an honest mistake that he failed to disclose any of those facts to the NIH when he was applying for grants. And now it's time for a dishonorable mention. This is Zhao Song Zhang. He's not a professor, so he didn't make our list, but he was a Chinese national posing as an innocent exchange student. In August of 2018, he was caught trying to smuggle 21 vials of sensitive cancer cell research in a sock through security and onto a plane bound for China. When asked if he was carrying sensitive research, Zhang denied any wrongdoing and claimed to have nothing of the sort in his possession, except he did. And he's now been charged and is currently in prison. Now, all of these stories barely made a blip on the media's radar. And if you ask most Americans, they'd have no idea just how many professors are selling out their country and students in pursuit of a quick payday. Most would be shocked to learn that fact, but they shouldn't be. All of these cases have happened in the last few years alone, and they're simply the ones that we've found out about. How many more are out there? I'm Cabot Phillips with The Daily Wire. Thanks for watching.